Hi everyone, welcome to this class where we look at equations of motion by the graphical method. So this is a very important class where we'll be looking at the equations of motion, what is their derivation using the graphical method and I'm going to make these graph concepts crystal clear to you. So let's begin. Now before we begin, I just want to say do check out the other courses on our website. We have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSE class 8, 9 and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken the other courses, do take them and please do share it with your friends. For the ICC students, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths courses for classes 8, 9 and 10. Once again, do share these out. And if you want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding and we have physics and Cambridge, uh, chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE board, which is the international board. So please do share our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So stay connected with Manocha Academy and keep learning. So remember, we have talked about these equations of motion in the last class. So what are these equations of motion? The three uh, important ones, right? You have the three equations of motion here, starting with V equal to U plus AT, S equal to UT plus half AT square, and we have V square equals U square plus 2AS. Now, what do all these symbols mean? Let's do a quick revision of the symbols. U is basically initial velocity, V is final velocity. Initial velocity means the velocity at the start. So when you start your experiment or the observation, what is that initial, the starting velocity that you measure? And obviously the unit is going to be, SI unit is going to be meter per second. Similarly, when you finally end your experiment, what is the last velocity that you measure? What is your final observation? That is known as final velocity. Once again, the unit is meter per second. Then what are the uh, other symbols here? We have T. T stands for time. And the SI unit time, what is it? It's not hours and minutes, it's seconds. Then who's this guy S over here? Does S stand for speed? No, please remember in physics, I know it's confusing, we think S is speed, but S stands for displacement or distance if you know you don't care about the direction or when you know bodies traveling in a straight line distance and displacement are the same thing so basically s is displacement or roughly speaking distance and displacement is obviously measured in meters in si units what does the last symbol left here we have a what does a stand for remember acceleration acceleration now we tend to think of acceleration means going faster and faster. Yes, that is positive acceleration, but a car could be slowing down when you apply the brakes. So whenever there's a change of velocity involved, that is called acceleration, right? So it could be positive acceleration or negative acceleration, which is known as retardation, deceleration. So here we have acceleration. The units of acceleration are meter per second squared. And please remember, acceleration could be positive or negative. When acceleration is negative, you just substitute it as a negative number in these equations. Okay, so please remember these three important equations of motion. Uh, of course, you have uh, another one, which is basically the acceleration formula A is V minus U by T, but we don't uh, tend to write it as an equation of motion. We just rearrange it and write it as V equal to U plus AT. And what is the best way to learn these equations? By lying down on the sofa and reading them? Obviously not. Pick up your pen and paper, write down these equations so that you will remember them. So in today's class, we'll be looking at these graph stuff. So it'll be great if you have a graph paper or at least you can uh, please use a paper and sketch down these axes so that you will understand this topic better. Again, this is a very important topic. Graphs is a very important concept. So please use a graph paper or a pen and paper to sketch these as we are studying it in class okay so here what are we looking at we are looking at a velocity time graph how do i know it's a velocity time graph look at the graph see what is drawn on the x-axis and y-axis you can see on the x-axis it is written t for time and in bracket we have second which is the unit and here you can see v the symbol v meter per second so this is velocity 
always we write the y axis thing first and then the x axis. So it's called a velocity time graph, not a time velocity graph, y first then x. Clear? Now what do we see in this velocity time graph? Clearly you can see uh, the velocity change is being plotted with as the time ticks on. So what is happening here? Clearly we can see there is a increase in velocity happening. Yes, because by the graph visually you can see the velocity values are increasing. Now we can give some values here if you want, you know, like uh, 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 10 meter per second, 20 meter per second. But if no units are given, clearly we can see velocity is increasing here. So this is a case of accelerated motion because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Clear? Now when you look at this graph, what are the three things you can do in a graph? I have discussed this in my earlier videos as well. So please watch the videos in this chapter. What are the three important things that you can do from a graph? Can you guys tell me? The three important things we can do from a graph are read the values or we can calculate the slope of the graph or we can work out the area under the graph. And let's do a quick recap with respect to this graph. So, you know, let's say some values are marked here. So, this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. And then you have 10 meter per second, 20 meter per second, 30 meter per second, 40, 50 and so on here. Now, what do we mean by the first thing reading the values? So, for example, if I ask you what is the initial velocity here? You can easily read that. Can you guys tell me? You just look at time equal to zero. What is the velocity? It's 50. So 50 meter per second. See, we can read the velocity. If I ask you what is the velocity at time three seconds, you just look this up in the graph and then you measure how much it is uh, on the y axis. So remember, this is the x axis. This is the y axis. You just read the value and you get it. So in a velocity time graph, what are the values you can read? What are the axes? Time and velocity. So in this graph, remember, for this graph, for a, you know, distance time graph, it will be distance and time. So in this example, if we simply read the values, we'll just get velocity and time. Because after all, that's what's plotted on the graph. X axis contains time values y-axis contains velocity value. So you can read that from the graph. Now if you calculate the slope of this graph, what will that give you? Can you guys tell me? If you find the slope of this graph, what is it going to give you? So remember, slope means y by x. Or if you want to accurately measure delta y by delta x, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. So remember, when you work out slope, it is basically change in y by change in x. Delta means change in y values by change in x values. Or you can remember that as y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. So change in y by change in x. So if I find the difference in velocities divided by time difference, or basically what am I doing? Veloc change of velocity by change in time velocity by time, what is that going to give me? What is change of velocity with time or rate of change of velocity? The correct answer is acceleration here. So clearly it's going to give me slope for this graph. I'm not talking about the graph at your home or some, you know, uh, cricket graph run rate over, you know, overs that will give something else. We are talking about a velocity time graph. Please remember that. And we are going to be using this important graph throughout our class today. So slope is going to give me acceleration what about the last one guys if you find the area under this graph what do I mean by area under the graph very simple you need to look at the area under this graph now but you will say where will the area stop so for that you consider a particular time so let's say our time observation ends here or 
maybe we can choose to do it till here. So whatever time t that you take, we are interested to find this area under the graph. And what will that give me? Now remember, easy way to remember is just like slope is y by x, change in y by change in x. Area means like length into breadth if you're finding area of a rectangle. So here area is going to be multiplication of x and y values. So x is time. And if you multiply velocity and time, what will you guys get? x times y values. So if you guys calculate the area here, it's going to be like doing a x times y, which is velocity times time. And that is going to give me displacement. You can say distance, but again, it's being rough because velocity is rate of change of displacement. If you multiply that by time, because velocity is displacement by time multiplied by time, time time cancels. So we are basically getting displacement or yes, roughly speaking distance. If we ignore the direction or body is traveling in a straight line. So are you guys clear? You can do three things from a graph. Either you can read the values, calculate the slope or find the area under the graph. And for this velocity time graph, these are the things we are getting. If you read the graph, we'll simply get velocity and time values. If we find the slope of this graph, y by x, we'll end up with acceleration values. If we find the area under this graph, we will end up with the distance traveled. And area under the graph is always calculated below by fixing your x value, the time value here. So now we are going to do something very interesting in today's class that we are going to derive the three equations of motion. These three equations of motion that we talked about we are going to understand their derivation using graphical method. How to use the graphical method to derive these equations of motion. And for that, we are going to make use of this general graph because you can see there's some initial velocity, some final velocity, and clearly there's some acceleration involved here because you can see velocity is increasing with time. So we are going to use this generic graph to do it. So let's start off with the deriv derivation of the first equation. So first equation of motion is V equal to U plus AT. So the goal is clearly written there on top. We need to end up with this equation using a graph, using graph concepts. So let's see, this is very interesting. Let's take a look. So again, we'll imagine a car or any body has been traveling like this where its velocity has been increasing over time. So how do you find this equation of motion? So first of all, when you look at this graph, what are the things we know? What is this over here? What is this velocity value here? Clearly, this is going to be the initial velocity, right, of the body. Do you guys agree? This is the, because at time equal to zero, I'm measuring the velocity. So this is clearly my initial velocity. And let's say I'm doing the measurement till some time t. And this is the final velocity. So final velocity, how do we get? By taking the final time and reading off the final velocity from here. So everybody's clear on this velocity time graph. This is the initial velocity. This is your final velocity when a car is moving from, let's say, zero time to t. Now, how do I get this equation of motion? Clearly, you can see what are the things involved in this equation of motion. The clue is there's initial velocity, final velocity, time, and A. A is acceleration. So remember, how do we get acceleration from a velocity time graph? So guys, we just discussed this. How do you get acceleration from a velocity time graph? Out of these three things, what are you going to use? We are going to use the slope because we cannot directly read acceleration it's a velocity time graph so we are going to go for slope because slope is y by x which gives me acceleration so the important thing is we are going to use slope we know that since it's a velocity time graph we know acceleration is going to be the slope of this graph so we can confidently write acceleration
is slope of the graph. So that is talking, you know, in uh, qu uh, quantitative terms that I know it's going to be velocity by time. Now let's get to some values. What are the values that we know? We know that there's initial velocity involved, there's final velocity and time is from 0 to t. So what is the acceleration going to be? The slope of this graph. So how do I find the slope? A is basically y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. So what are my values on the y axis? This is the initial velocity, final velocity. So these are my two y values. So let's write them down here. V minus u divided by what is the difference in my x values? t and 0. So we have t minus 0. Do you guys agree? Can you see? If you take a look at this graph, we can find the slope by considering these two points. We can find the slope of this graph by considering these two end points. Actually, you can find the slope by taking any two points because it is a straight line. So if I consider these two endpoints, what is going to, what is my slope going to be? The difference in y values divided by the difference in x values. Yes or no? So what is the difference in y values? V minus u. See, I have written V minus u. What is the difference in x values? T minus 0. T minus 0. Or if you want to think it in terms of coordinate geometry, we can write the coordinates of this point are basically 0 comma u. Can you guys see that? Coordinates of this point are t comma v, x value comma y value. So does that make sense? We are subtracting the two y values v minus u and the two x values t minus 0. So finally what do we get? We are basically getting a is v minus u divided by t. So you will say we have just got the acceleration formula. But if you rearrange this, if you bring up the t here, it becomes a t is v minus u. And if you rearrange it, you bring the u here or you put the v on the left side, v equal to u plus a t. Isn't that matching the first equation of motion? So that's it. So you can easily derive this equation because we are interested in acceleration. Acceleration is going to be the slope of this graph, which means difference in the y values, final minus initial velocity, divided by the time values. And time we took it from 0. So this is 0 time to t. That's it. We have got the first equation of motion. Now let's derive the second equation of motion once again using the graphical method. What is the second equation of motion? S equal to ut plus half a t square. So we are going to use the same graph in today's class. So remember in this graph we are doing the observation from 0 to t. This is the initial value here. Initial velocity is u after this time t. This is the final velocity v. Our goal is to derive this equation of motion. Now what you can see here, interesting thing is, we are now interested in s. Who is s? s is not speed. Please remember, s as we discussed is displacement of the body. Displacement means, uh, displacement is basically distance with direction. If the body is traveling in a straight line, you know distance and displacement are same because displacement is the shortest distance from initial to final position. So here we are interested in displacement. So how do we calculate the displacement from this graph? Because we are deriving these equations using the graphical method, not algebraic method, graphical method. So once again, let's rely on the important three things that we uh, can do from a graph. We can read the values, calculate the slope area under the graph. So for displacement, which one are you guys going to use for this? To find displacement, will you read, calculate the slope or area? 
as you can see we have discussed for area it gives us displacement and please remember area not of any uh, uh, you know geometrical shape we are talking about area under the graph so let's mark this area over here we are talking about So we are talking about this entire area under this graph. So can you guys calculate it? So this area under the graph, now we can use some simple geometry because we can see that we have a, you know, geometry kind of shape over here. By the way, what shape is this? So one, two, three, four sides. It's a quadrilateral. And since these two sides are parallel, it's like a trapezium shape, right? So, but we are interested in calculating the area of this quadrilateral, this shape under the graph. Now, one very smart thing we can do here to find the area. So, see, remember, our goal here is displacement, which is going to be so. Since this is a trapezium kind of quadrilateral, one smart thing to find its area, we can break it down into a rectangle and a triangle. Can you guys see that? So, if I break it down here. So if we break it down like this, can you guys see we have a we have a rectangle here and a triangle here. So I can find this area by adding up the area of this rectangle and this triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be the area of this rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So we can say area of rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So what is this area of this rectangle going to be? The length of the rectangle is T. The breadth of the rectangle is U. Look here. The length is along the x-axis T. The breadth is U. So for area of the rectangle, I can easily multiply u times t simply. Now what is the area of this triangle? Area of triangle, what is the formula? Half base into height. So let's put that down. You know, area of a triangle is going to be half base times the height. What is the base of this rectangle? You can see this is the base. That means it's measured along the x-axis, which means it is of length t. See, it's along the x-axis of length t. What is the height of this rectangle, a triangle? So we can see the height of this triangle. Can you guys tell me? The base is clearly t, but what is the height? The height is clearly this difference, this much. So since we want to read the height on the y-axis, if you look here, how much is it going to be? V minus u. Do you guys see that? So clearly the height is going to be V minus u here. So let's go ahead and substitute this, what we have here. So area of rectangle is simple ut. And this is going to give us half times the base. Base is clearly t times the height which is v minus u and this area we said is the displacement so we are going to say displacement equals this but you can see this is not matching the equation we want we wanted ut plus half at square but we have something different here so how do we get to the second equation of motion how do we derive it so you can see at least we have the ut terms the first term is done we only have to focus on the next term we have the half also we have a t but we don't have an a here. We have a v minus u. So to get to this second equation, we can use the first equation of motion since we have already derived it from the graph. So if you look at the first equation of motion, we know that v equals u plus at or v minus u equals at. So that's what we're going to do here. We are going to use the first equation of motion and we will substitute v minus u as at. 
that's it so we will just replace the v minus u as at using the first equation of motion so please do that here so what do we get s equals ut plus half times t times at and yes there you can see we have derived our equation because at times t is t square so we are getting s equal to ut plus at square so we should celebrate now because we have got the second equation also from the graph in such a simple way so there you can see we have our second equation of motion from the graphical method one last celebration remaining which is the derivation of the third equation so we have derived the first two how we can derive the third equation from the graphical method again we are using the same general graph which is going from u to v so let's mark the time let's say the time here was t so here again we are having the initial velocity u final velocity is v so good question that why did for the second equation why did i divide it into triangle and rectangle rather than using a trapezium the answer is coming up very soon the answer is in fact coming up in this uh, derivation of the third equation so now here you can see in the third equation what do we have v u 2 uh, we have uh, final velocity initial velocity acceleration and displacement so again we have s the displacement term is there so let's try to again find the displacement in this graph but you said we've already done that displacement is area of the graph yes so we can once again say displacement is area under the graph which means this entire area below the graph so let's mark this area here so you can see area under the graph means below the graph and bounded by the x axis the y axis and this last your time right so in the uh, derivation of the second equation of motion we broke it into a rectangle and a triangle but how about this time we find the displacement in a different way like you were suggesting let's use the area of the trapezium because from geometry we know the formula of area of a trapezium do you guys know that so please note it down if you don't know what is the area of a trapezium we can say that this displacement is simply the area of the trapezium and what is area of trapezium formula half sum of parallel sides multiplied by the distance between the parallel sides half a plus b times h so let's use that formula here so what are the parallel sides here in this trapezium can you guys tell me clearly you can see these two are not parallel it is this y axis and this vertical line that we drew these are the two parallel sides so we need to find the sum of these two parallel sides multiplied by the distance between the parallel sides so let's plug that in here so area is going to be half of a plus b so here you can see this parallel side is u and what is the length of this parallel side v so i'm going to replace with half times u plus v the length of the two parallel sides multiplied by the distance between the two parallel sides that is clearly t so let's substitute that here is this clear so this is the area and area we know means displacement so therefore we can say we can replace area with the displacement symbol everybody is clear till here using this same graph that we have been using now once again you can see our goal there is no t in the third equation of motion there is no time but there is a time here so we can eliminate the time once again using the first equation of motion v equal to u plus at so we can say using first equation v equal to u plus at or i can say time is v minus u by a 
and we are going to substitute that here. We are going to put that in that time t. So, what are we going to get? S equals half times u plus v and the time is going to replace by v minus u by a. v minus u divided by a. So, what do we finally end up with? u plus v times v minus u or if you rearrange it and write it this way or s is v plus u times v minus u divided by 2a. What is v plus u times v minus u? You can see that formula a plus b times a minus b or x plus y times x minus y, x square minus y square. So we can use that v square minus u square difference of two squares. So what do we have here? This numerator is the difference of two squares and if you cross multiply here, you are going to get 2as is v square minus u square. If you rearrange this, aren't you going to end up with the third equation? So if we rearrange this, we are going to get v square equals u square plus 2as. Please check. So now we can clearly do our celebration because we have the third equation of motion once again using graphical method. So simple. But for second and third equation, we had to take use of the first equation. So there you can see this is the third equation of motion. So remember second and third equation, they're all working on the area. In this one, we broke it into a rectangle and triangle. For this one, we found the area of the trapezium. Now we have done the derivations of the three equations of motion. Let's practice a, a question on graphical method. So suppose you are given a velocity time graph for a moving body like this and we need to find all these things. Maximum velocity, acceleration in the first three seconds, between these few seconds and the total distance traveled. So let's go ahead and try these uh, step by step the different uh, questions that are given here. So starting with the part A, find the maximum velocity. So you have been given this velocity time graph. Can you guys tell me what is the maximum velocity here? See our goal is velocity. It's a velocity time graph. So what do we need to do? Just directly read the values from the graph because it is a velocity time graph. So what is the maximum highest velocity here? Very simple. See this is the maximum velocity and you can see the answer is going to be You just read off the values and you will see you are getting the answer as 30 meter per second. There you go. Next question. Find the acceleration in the first three seconds. So when we are talking about the first three seconds, only focus on that. So from zero to three. So let's draw a perpendicular here. So we are interested in the first three seconds. Now we need to find the acceleration from this graph that has been given right this motion but it's a velocity time graph velocity on y axis ax, uh, time on x axis how do you find the acceleration in a velocity time graph we can't read because reading will only give me velocity and time acceleration is rate of change of velocity or velocity divided by time y by x which means i need to use the slope of the graph so i can say acceleration is going to be slope of graph from 0 to 3 seconds. Not the slope of the entire graph, only the time you are interested in, first 3 seconds. So please calculate this slope for me. So acceleration is going to be, so one way to look at slope is the change in y values. So what is the final y value? 30 the initial y value is 0 or you can say or you can write it as simply v minus u by t as well because this is the final velocity minus initial velocity so final velocity is 30 initial velocity is 0 again we are looking only from 0 to 3 seconds what is the time involved here 0 to 3 seconds so 3 seconds so this is going to be 30 minus 0 divided by 3 minus 0 so the acceleration involved here is 30 by 3. A is 10. Should I end my answer like that? 
you'll ask me is it 10 rupees 10 dollars what are the units please don't forget the units here so the units are clearly going to be meter per second divided by second you can see so meter per second square because it's a meter per second divided by a second so the correct answer is 10 meters per second square here's the acceleration in the first three seconds next question find the acceleration between three and eight seconds so once again mark the time clearly in the graph given here so here you have your three second point and eight seconds here we need to find the acceleration between these two times again remember we are dealing with a velocity time graph so acceleration is going to be slope of the graph here so we can say acceleration is slope of graph but now between 3 to 8 seconds so what is going to be the acceleration here one of course you can use the formula v minus u divided by t or if you look at it it is lying flat so that is the beauty of graphical method you can directly say no slope slope is zero which means no acceleration because see velocity is remaining constant 30 meters per second here there was actually acceleration here there is no acceleration so that's it we can directly say from the graph acceleration is zero meters per second or if you work out the values diligently v minus u by t you will get the same answer a is v minus u divided by t so we have 30 minus 30 divided by the time is going to be 8 minus 3 so acceleration 0 means no change in velocity that's it next question find the acceleration in the last two seconds in these last two seconds what is the acceleration involved here so once again you know drop your perpendicular and we are concerned with these last two seconds acceleration is again going to be slope of the graph from 8 to 10 seconds so please work that out for me so v minus u by t so what is the final velocity here or the final y value you can see it is zero so let's substitute that the body comes to a rest what is the initial velocity at so final velocity at 10 seconds is zero initial velocity at 8 seconds is 30 meter per second so you can easily read the value here so let's substitute 30 what is the change in time from 8 to 10 seconds how many seconds 2 seconds or you can write 10 minus 8 so we basically have minus 30 divided by 2 here so what is the answer going to be therefore acceleration is going to be minus 15 meter per second square now you might be thinking why did i get a negative answer well because speed is decreasing from 30 to 0 this is a case of retardation or the de deceleration right so we can write this as the answer or we can say retardation and there's the answer let's try this one find the total distance traveled in five seconds so how do you calculate the distance traveled in five seconds five seconds means once again draw the perpendicular here so we are interested in this part now here distance or displacement mean the same thing because we don't care about the direction so we are interested in this area area under this graph can you work that out for me so either you can use this trapezium or you can break it into a triangle and a rectangle so we can say distance is going to be area under the graph till five seconds so please work that out for me what is the area under this graph so since it's a trapezium it's going to be half sum of the parallel sides so this is going to be five this is 5 minus 3 so that's 2 and distance between the parallel sides because these two are the parallel sides right these are the parallel sides and distance between the two parallel sides is 30 so we are going to plug in 30 here so basically what are we getting half times 7 
times 30 which is 7 times 15 so distance is 105 and the SI unit will obviously be meters and last question find the total distance traveled in the entire 10 seconds so this time remember there that time we were just asking 5 seconds this time we are talking about this entire trapezium so area under the graph so here we can say the total distance will be area under the graph so in this trapezium again you can see it's a trapezium these are the two parallel sides you can measure their lengths by dropping these perpendiculars so we can say distance is half a plus b times h so sum of the parallel sides one parallel side is 10 the other one is going to be 8 minus 3 5 and what is the distance between the parallel sides once again the distance between the parallel sides is 30 multiplied by 30 so what are we getting here half times 15 times 30 which is nothing but 15 times 15 so 15 square what is the answer 225 meters and that's going to be the total distance traveled here so hope you guys enjoyed this class and the equations of motion with the graphical method the proof is clear to you and we also did a graph based question so hope the concepts are crystal clear and do check out the other courses on our website we have physics chemistry biology and maths for cbse class 8 9 and 10 so guys if you haven't taken the other courses do take them and do share it out with your friends for the icc students we have physics chemistry biology and maths for classes 8 9 and 10 once again do share out our courses with your friends and if you want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding. Both are great languages to learn computer programming. And we have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the international board. So please do share our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So stay connected with Manucha Academy and keep learning.